So I have worked on technologies ranging from uh, Internet of Things, smart hearable devices, uh, intelligent voice assistant Bixby, to now designing applications for uh, enterprises. Yeah, they are not that boring. <laughs> they are quite fulfilling. To begin with, I want to show you something uh, which I stumbled across recently. Well, right now what you saw is the classical example of uh, the over usage of smartphones. And we all have been through it. We know our families, friends actually going through it. Like wife is, wife is talking to the husband and he's always busy in the phone. Or you go out in, um, in the restaurant and you're you know, having a nice catch up with your friends, but friends are busy catching up on Facebook. So you're like, hey, I'm here. But then they're looking at the digital imagery of yourself. So I was in the same space. And uh, three years back, I was diagnosed with clinical anxiety. So basically, uh, this is something uh, which means that I cannot keep calm. That means I have a perpetual fear of everyday things. And it's quite intensified at times. I get panic attacks when I'm flying. I used to love flying. And I get panic attacks. And I'm shivering in the air hostess comes and gives me a lemon. I said, hey, I need some chocolate. <laughs> so yeah, so things like these happen. And then I kind of spoke to the doctors. I was going through um, therapies. I spoke to the doctor and asked him what exactly was the reason behind it. And he said that the reason could be anything. And um, he said it could be perhaps a lifestyle issue as well. So that word kind of triggered in my head, like lifestyle. What is it that I'm doing wrong in my life? Why aren't my peers having the same thing? Then I kind of traced back to what am I doing in my life. And it was something similar which you saw in the video. That I was always on my phone, you know, checking out my phone. Before the food arrives, I'll click pictures and, you know, do Insta and stuff like that. And then I realized the underlying principle of all the therapies, of even the alternative therapies like yoga or pranayam, the idea is to stay in the moment, stay present. And this is what the technology is avoiding us to do. We are not actually in the moment. We are not living the lives the way we are supposed to live. And hence, this kind of question kept on you know, coming back to me. So I was working at Samsung. I was like, hey, I am the designer. I am designing these products. And I wouldn't have known unless and until I figured I faced this issue myself. That means I am creating further more problems for somebody. And then I asked this question to myself, am I responsible for this? And then we conduct some studies. And then we say, oh, our product is cool enough. And the onboarding experience is nice. People are using the app is successful and usable, and hence our product is of a success. Then we think that, yes, the users are using our products for a while, and then we are able to retain those products. So retention is, again, one more metric of success for us. Then referrals, yes, let's share it with our friends, see how cool it is. Oh, cred is there in uh, the new app store, has this cred app coming up. Let's share it with friends. So that is, again, uh, an indicator of success. Then comes revenues. Yes, in the end, we have to get our appraisals. And then we have to consider that, yes, how much business our app has done. So yeah, revenue is, again, counted as a measure of design success. But what we fail to understand is that people are more important than businesses. We are advocates of design. We are designers. And we are designing for people, not businesses. And this is the inherent understanding which we as, a, as designers should have. 
So um, this is a quote by Sean Parker, who, is the, who was the former Facebook president. He had already uh, made it to know, uh, brought it to notice about the problems which Facebook is creating for users. And he has also mentioned to the investors that, you know, you are in, uh, playing with the human psychology. They understood it, yet they went ahead with it because they wanted to earn money, they wanted to get data. He also said that I helped the uh, humanity, I helped uh, destroy humanity through these social media applications. And hence, we are actually altering the human behavior. So what are we exactly doing in the current scenario? We are designing experiences that are delightful. Yes, we are working for human experience. We are designing products which are functional, convenient, and reliable. Checkmark usability. But what about the decentralization, the privacy, or the openness of the data, or the products which you are creating? Are they secure? Are they sustainable? Are they actually solving the human right. We as human, uh, we as user experience designers, we have not even thought of the basic, the underlying principle of humans. So how can we consider ourselves as user experience designers or de people designing things for uh, people? So this is the responsible hierarchy of needs. This was developed by two European designers, uh, whose name was Aaron Balkin and uh, Laura Kalbach, they run a non-profit by the name of Indy, and they are into designing uh, products which cater to social justice in the age of uh, digital products. So I'll just, so now we already have an understanding of what responsibilities are lacking for uh, in us. So I'll just quickly run you through the uh, few of the uh, pointers which I consider as responsible design. So firstly, responsible design is non-addictive. What exactly does it mean? If you see social media, if you see um, social media has been designed to hook us up, hook uh, us with the technology. But at the same time, what we realized is that um, things like non common interactions, like an endless scroll, it is actually playing with our minds. So this pull to refresh feature or an endless scroll gives the idea that you know there is much more to play around with or maybe there is more data. But what exactly they are doing is they are playing with our uh, human mind because we are losing a sense of control in this. But then the same pattern, if done right, in the ERP applications, for example, users are loaded with data, but then if we pro, uh, bring something like this for the users, then the experience is quite delightful. They can quickly load en enormous amounts of data. So again, the question is how we are doing things right for people. The same example goes with uh, YouTube or Facebook's uh, auto play feature, wherein again, they are tricking our minds by we are just sitting, we are doing like mindless watching and the uh, system is playing, the technology is playing things for you. So again, is this a matter of responsible design? Like these sim smaller things, which we have no never even thought, we are just bringing in you know, revenues for businesses, but then we are still, we are creating a, a social, uh, we are not working in the social justice uh, domain. So um, there is an interesting, um, uh, quote by uh, Tristan Harris, he is, uh, he was actually a design ethicist at Google. So yes, design ethicist, ethicist is a real role. And he said that the smartphones are not designed to help us. They are designed to keep us hooked. And he has a, a non-profit again, by the name of time, uh, time well spent. And you can have a look at it. He is actually talking about different uh, mechanisms which you can employ to your systems by keeping, by engaging the users and yet saving their time. The second part is, um, my consideration here is responsible design is inclusive. The better, the best example could be the gorilla, uh, uh, like their face tagging, uh, which the black people of black ethnicity were uh, considered as gorillas. Had the designers considered the inclusivity of 
uh, the users who would be using it, this issue wouldn't have occurred. Black people actually now doubt using Facebook or Google in those regards. The third kind of consideration here is responsible re design respects human emotions. I came across a post by on, so on social media, on Twitter, by uh, a user, uh, a Facebook user, who had mentioned that, uh, who had lost uh, a uh, near and dear one, and uh, Facebook actually uh, showed something uh, like this to celebrate this day. Again, this is not responsible. This is actually creating, like bringing saddening memories to the users. I also consider responsible design as honest, something which trusts your privacy, something which trusts your data, something which does not mislead you. And I'll show you uh, a, a video on this, uh, which is uh, based on dark patterns. I'm not sure if you are aware of.
Well, this is uh, a classic example. Like we would be getting calls from our parents saying, "Beta, mera mere ko ek call aaya lottery ka ya mere ko ek message aaya lottery ka. Main apne account details bhejo." What if your parents would have done it and you would have lost money any which ways? Again, the same thing is, would that designer thought of this thing that they were actually playing with people's mind and you know, actually playing with their psyches? So now, um, I will also tell you what exactly are the responsibilities of us designers when we are designing uh, products for people, because we are the advocates of design. Be a forward thinker. You are designing cool things, you are designing concepts, but what are the repercussions of the concepts? It's something you have to think in well in advance. Maybe um, you can already you know, go ahead and check blogs and uh, check papers online and th see uh, what could be the problems which are uh, which the technology is already posing the second part i would say is you have to be aware evangelize responsible design so there would be you know uh, business decisions or strategies which would have been made saying that you know let's do something uh, crazy let's do something wacky and then here, you should be aware that you know something is being wrong, being done wrong for the people. And this is what you have to be aware and you have to let your organizations know. Learn to say no. At times, come uh, your developers come and they say that, you know, let's do something we are not able to do. This is technically impossible. You might get succumbed to it, but you have to take a stand for your users and say no. I would not design anything for the cost of bad design or something which is not responsible. Provide alternatives in case there are some business strategies you think there is something is going wrong or maybe it's technically impossible. Maybe you can provide some responsible uh, alternatives. And then lastly, revisit continuously. That means you have designed something, but it's just not based on the metrics of design success. You conduct usability testing to understand whether your product is being used. But then you have to check for addictions. You have to check for the um, dark patterns your uh, app might you know, uh, raise up. And then lastly, I would say with great power comes great responsibility. And then let's design responsibly. You can, um, so uh, in future, I'm planning to create a, a society of responsible designers. It would be a, a personal in initiative, a non-profit event. So if you want to join in or if you want to be a part of it, you can just drop in the mail and then we can discuss more on this. And UX India 2019 is honoring you with this moment.